What's up, everybody? Ryan Pulis here from the Pulis Group. We're a tax and accounting firm specializing in tax planning for small businesses and real estate investors. In this video of our small business tax and accounting series, we're going to discuss the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement is the third of the three main financial statements. In the last two videos, we discussed the income statement and the balance sheet. The cash flow statement is the third and another key financial statement that business owners should understand. The cash flow statement shows how much cash is flowing in and out of your business. When you receive or spend cash, it doesn't always hit the income statement. Sometimes the cash in or out is recorded on the balance sheet. Neither the income statement or balance sheet give us a clear picture of where all the cash ends up. It can be reflected on either report. This is where the cash flow statement comes in. It's a report of all the cash coming into or leaving your bank account, regardless of whether the cash hits the balance sheet or the income statement. The cash flow statement provides a reconciliation between the balance sheet and the income statement that shows the actual amounts of cash flow a company's generated from its various activities in a given period. The cash flow statement must be considered along with the balance sheet and income statement to get a true financial understanding of a company. Remember, the balance sheet shows your company's financial condition on a specific date, and the income statement shows your profitability over a period of time. The cash flow statement shows how the cash was used by the company during the reporting period. If you take a look at our sample cash flow statement on the screen, you'll see there are three main parts. First, in the top portion, is the cash flow from operating activities. Then second is the cash flow from investing activities. And the third portion is cash flow from investing activities. <clears throat> the operating section represents incoming and outgoing cash from normal business activity. All of your day-to-day -day operating cash activities reflected here. If you sell widgets, this is where the income and expense related to selling those widgets goes. The investing section shows the incoming and outgoing cash related to investments your business is making. This could be investments in equipment and long-term assets or investments in other businesses. Changes to current assets and current liabilities are accounted for in the operating section. Here in the investing section, activity is dealing with non-current assets or long-term assets. So operating section, current assets and current liabilities investing section, non-current assets. The financing section, where the cash flows from financing activities, shows the incoming and outgoing cash activity related to financing your business. This can be loans, owner contributions, or owner distributions. This section deals with non-current liabilities and owner's equity. So following these, the three core sections of the cash flow statement, you'll see right here, a net increase or decrease in cash for the period. And below that, taken together, are, is a, a, a summary of your cash flows for the period. So you'll see there's the increase or decrease in cash for the period. And then below that, we see cash at the beginning of the year and cash at the end of the year. So this net increase or decrease is the total of cash flows from operating activities, investing activities, and finance, financing activities. It also equals cash at the beginning of the year minus, or I'm sorry, cash at the end of the year minus cash at the beginning of the year. So both of those calculations tie back to the 55,785 we have here on the screen. So the cash flow statement is gener generally reported on what's called the indirect method. The other less common method is called the direct method. The main difference between the two is reflected in the operating activities section. With the direct method, you present cash flows from operating activities as cash collections, <clears throat> excuse me, and cash payments that result from the company's operating activities. It could be tax payments, purchases, interest payments. The indirect method, which is far more common and is what we see here with our sample company, starts with net income and adds back non-cash expenses like depreciation and amortization then you adjust for changes in current assets and current liabilities and any other sources on the balance sheet, such as non-operating gains and losses. You prepare the financing and investing sections of the cash flow statement the same exact way, regardless if you're using the direct or indirect methods. <clears throat> now we'll look at a few financial ratios that use the cash flow statement. 
So here underneath our cash flows report, you'll see we have three calculations or three metrics ratios. First, we have the operating cash flow ratio, which is a measure of a company's ability to cover its current liabilities by using its cash flows from operating activities. It's calculated by taking cash flow from operations divided by current liabilities. Remember, the current liabilities number comes from the balance sheet, so we'll be using both financial statements to calculate this ratio. And on our sample here, we have a ratio of 1.72, which is 110,914 operating cash flow from the cash flow statement divided by 64,636 in current liabilities from the balance sheet we looked at last time. I'll post a link to the three financial statements in the comments below so you can download them all if you like. Next, we have the debt to cash flow ratio, which is calculated by dividing total debt or total liabilities by total cash flows. The total debt or total liabilities will come from the balance sheet again. This ratio measures the company's ability to cover its debt from its cash flows. It tells us about how many years it should take a company to pay off its debt at the current cash flow level. And on our example here, we have a ratio of 2.05, which is found by dividing the $114,636 of total liabilities from the balance sheet, which is not shown here. That's from our last video, and that's divided by the 55,785 net increase in cash on this cash flow statement. That gives us just over two, so about two years to cover all our liabilities based on our current cash flow levels. The third and final metric displayed here is free cash flow. This is calculated by taking your operating cash flow minus capital, capital expenditures. This calculation provides the amount by which a business's operating cash flow exceeds its working capital needs and expenditures, known, expenditures on fixed assets, which is also known as uh, capital expenditures. So to recap, the cash flow statement provides a clear picture for your business, business's ingoing and out, incoming and outflowing cash. The cash flow statement ties together the income statement and the balance sheet by reconciling the changes in cash. The three main sections of the cash flow statement are the operating, investing, and financing sections. Cash flow statement shows how well a company manages its cash position. It complements the income statement and balance sheet to provide an overall picture of the company. So that about does it for our discussion of the cash flow statement. I hope this was helpful. If there are other topics you'd like to see covered, let us know in the comments section below. We are taking on new clients. If you'd like to work with us, feel free to hit us up on our webpage at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's T-H-E-P-U-L-I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P.com forward slash contact. Thank you and have a great day.